Hi, I'm Paul Sherratt. I'm Martin Brennan. And welcome back to the Goalkeeping Podcast. Now, you're a little bit late this morning. I understand you had some... Was I? Yeah, you had some... Well, I, I, I said What was late. the meet time then? Well, we sort of said eight, really. Oh. So there was a WhatsApp. I'm going to be... The WhatsApp said something about, I'm driving the horse box. <laughs> I'll be I thought you weren't going to mention I'll that. I'll be with you at 8.15. <laughs> Which can I just say? Yeah. When you arrived, I was disappointed you weren't in your jobbers and your, <laughs> you know, your tweed. Well, I've got new gloves, tweed. so yeah. Yeah, you got new gloves. Yeah. So, was it a bit of a, a vehicle? So problem? yeah. So yesterday I put the uh, put the van in, and very very unexpected. The, the the first van I had was like seven years old. I had nothing wrong. This with is it. a van, or this is a horse box? Are we talking? Cross this is a van here? first. Oh, this is your van. Van, yes. This is the developing goalkeeping yes. UK. The first developing goalkeeping van. Yes. I'm now on the second developing goalkeeping van, but the okay. first one had nothing wrong with it for about seven years. This one's the new one, which is like 2017 plates, gone in and failed the MOT. Same model and make as you had previously? Egg, exactly the same. Can you name the uh, name and shame the uh, car manufacturer? Am I allowed? I don't know. I don't know if I want to because the last one was outstanding. Yeah. So it was only down to a little couple of little springs. It weren't like a you know. Yeah, but how long the you engine's had it? fallen out or anything? How long you had it? Oh, four months. And it's failed the MOT. D- 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 failed it. The new vehicles have to go through that. I mean, I suppose they do, don't they? Yeah. I'm not sure. No, not me. So, put took it in yesterday, and I'm expecting it to come out. Yeah, NMA, it's done. Yeah, perfect. Come pick it up, get there. And he's like, well, it's failed. Brilliant. So, I technically can't drive to Oxford tomorrow because yeah. I have no vehicle. But there is a spare vehicle on the drive. Brilliant. Of which is the horse box. And how old's the horse box? Just so I can picture it. The horse box is a... 2005 no 2007 plate so good classic so seen done got so, how many miles on the clock 167 yeah, perfect yeah. yeah brilliant yeah okay he's kind yeah, love it yeah I enjoy driving yeah, it yeah, I must perfect. be honest so um, you were then looking at the prospect of driving from your gaff yeah yeah from from mine to Oxford and then obviously I've got sessions this evening so I'm going to go from Oxford <laughs> to Hartford yeah then back to Hartford to where I live and then out to another session one more tonight for the senior group to then come home again. So it's not a short journey. No. Um, but Com- it's done a lot of miles. Not very comfy. Or is that okay? It's not bad. Is it all right? It's got a little armrest that you can flick down. Ah, and obviously, nice. yeah, it, nice. yeah, it's nice. quite, it is comfy. It is comfy. DG so. UK branded? Of which is sold, which is sold by the way. They're picking it up in two days' time. What sold? The horse box? The horse box. So, so you thought you'd whack another <laughs> couple of thousand miles on it yeah. just because it's sold anyway. Yeah, and I'm going to keep driving so there's no <laughs> petrol left. Yeah, Because it's not going to freebie. Um, but yeah, it's actually sold. What's enough, it being so. replaced with? It's, uh, that's another topic. Well, it's being replaced with a, I think she's gone for a five ton. This is like a big van at the minute. Yeah. So we're good. This is okay. Yeah. If the MOT fails on the next podcast film, then I've got a problem because I'm coming basically in a double decker bus near enough. Do which would ro- be fun. Do you have room on the drive for this new double decker bus that's coming? Mm, not really. No. 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 But so, it's, but we'll, it's, we'll it's find ha- it. It's happened. It's been. Yeah. You know, people knock through to then extend or whatever. We're knocking through to lose some <laughs> of the house so we can get, <laughs> get for, the in. New, for the new big horse yeah. box. Yeah. Well, fantastic. So, yeah, it's been an interesting morning. So. How's your lovely vehicle this morning? <laughs> Cruised in. Yeah. Um, no problem. Here on time. Um, You've mentioned that twice yeah, now. Yeah. Um, set, I think we, you we, was we, early, we were, not I was late. I think you was early. We were here about five to eight, ten to eight, stopped yeah. on the way to get some sandwiches for yeah. lunch. It's um, quite close though, isn't it, Oxford, from where you are? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's just, well, traffic's not great in the morning. Uh, not from Essex, home no. At, left home at 6.45, got here at probably 7.50. Oh, so still a fair journey. Yeah. Nice. But um, yeah, so we're here. You are here. Um, and we are here. And But we got uh, here. We got here. It's got four wheels. It got me here. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So. Um, and I thought, I was thinking on the way about, um, I don't know why I was thinking about this, um, measuring things. <laughs> I know it's a bizarre talk. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And how far did you get with that? 
I don't know why my mind was on this. I was thinking about it's probably thinking about measuring distances from Oxford to my home oh, for okay. you, and I was sort of good. Please, you cleared that. Yeah, up. and then I thought, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that was last night. That was not this morning. On the net. that's a different topic. Um, and then I sort of thought, well, I better bring it back to goalkeeping because, after all, this is the goalkeeping podcast. Yep. And then I started thinking. Are there measurables? See what I've done there. It's good how I sort of segued across. It's a good word as well. Are there measurables? Yeah. For goalkeepers. Well, do you know what? I actually set a task on one of the. I think it was the no, both camps on a junior elite camp and a senior elite camp, and I said to the group in a work in a classroom session, you've got ten fifteen minutes to work out how many things you can measure Brilliant. in goalkeeping. The volume in the the room went up massively, right? They actually quite they really enjoyed yeah. doing this. Anyway, we've got all the answers. Come back and um, uh, goals against uh, they come up with loads, yeah. right? And every single one that come up, I just question marked every single one. I don't think you can measure anything in goalkeeping. The closest we got to a measurable, what would the word be? I don't know. The only thing we could come up with was a penalty kick. Yeah. So facing a penalty kick is the only thing we could get close to. Because you could say, right, you in the last game come for three crosses. Yeah. I come for four crosses. That makes me a better goalie. But it okay. doesn't, does it? Cause it's it doesn't, a, but... It's an opinion. Okay, there is one... Yep. ...measurable... Yeah. ...that is used constantly. In fact... I happened to pick up the phone to a customer this week. Bizarre phone call, I have to be said, because I think this particular customer was a little bit lonely <laughs> <laughs> and therefore wasn't was more interested in talking generally nice. about his goalkeeping skills as opposed nice. to buying a product. But anyway, he did um, to try and... Um, What's the word? Underline how good a goalkeeper he is. Right. Um, he did tell me that in the last three games that he's played, he's kept three clean sheets. Right. So he used the clean sheet stat yep. to support his prowess between the sticks. But is that measurable for just the goalie? Well, it isn't. But it's the only stat that I can think of yeah. that is used as a... Well, Martin Brand's brilliant. He's had a brilliant season. He's kept 20 clean sheets this season. But it is then usually followed by, and the team have done da-da-da-da-da, isn't it? Yeah. It's, there's a small bit of that I agree with. There's a small bit on a few of the topics that the, the goalies come up with that I agree with. There's a few bits. Okay, what, what were the... But, I can still put an argument against it. So the clean sheet, 100%. You've kept five, I've kept 10. That clearly makes me a better goalie. Yeah. But does that not depend on what league we're in? Does that not depend on what shape you play? There's so many things to that. Well, it does, but you're only employed to do one thing. All right, well, what's one sport then where you can measure? Oh, hang on a sec. Go on. You're employed to do one thing, and that's keep the ball at the back of the net. Yep. I agree. And therefore... Well, actually, do clubs pay bonuses on if you, as a goalkeeper, if you keep a clean sheet? Yes. So the club is even measuring. Of uh, course, yeah. It's the only measurable a club will use to give you a bonus as a keeper. So say you've, yeah, say you've kept five clean sheets. Yeah. And I've kept 10 clean sheets. Yeah. And we've kept five each. Yeah. Right? But my team has scored 10 more goals than your team. Yeah. Have I played a bigger part in trying to set up them 10 goals? Have I set off counter-attacks more? I don't so know. does that become, does I that make know. me more effective than you? That like, that there's so, there's no, so I, many. No, I, I hear you. But what, 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 wait, one second. What I want to get to the point of is, what sport can, is there a truth that you can measure? So you've got this point, I've got this point, full stop. Okay, well my, you know like cycling, my other sport is tennis. Yep. There's a gazillion measurables in tennis. 
Let's do my po- best. Points my one, best points ball. lost, or you know where I've where I've served the ball, how many forehand, how many errors. I mean, there's there's a, there's a gazillion of stats. My sport is simple, really simple. Yeah, you've took four shots to get it in the arm. I've took three. I win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I use one hand, it's irrelevant. Yeah. If I use two hands, it's irrelevant. If I've got a horrendous looking swing, it's irrelevant. Yeah, I've got it in three. I've got it in four. So what I'm trying to get to the point of, there's a truth behind whether I'm a better golfer than you or not because we can measure it. Goalkeeping is all opinion-based. But okay, then football is all opinion-based because if you're saying we're not, we're yeah. going to discount clean sheets, then we're also going to discount goals. And therefore, if you're looking at measuring how good an individual is, whether they're a defender, a goalkeeper, a striker, midfielder, what are what are the measurables? Obviously, they all wear these GPS yeah. trackers these days. Yeah. So you could chuck a load of measurables in yeah, and yeah. say, well, he's he or she has run more in the last 90 minutes. They've covered more ground. They've yeah. done more tackles. So, so there are some bits around that. Um, there's some stats. There's a, I think there's a stat out about strikers yeah. and when they're through on goal, how... Um, likely they are to score a goal. So yep. there's a ranking for yep. strikers. And in fact, there's something based on that for goalkeepers, which I wrote down because I did a little bit of research. I know it's out of character, but uh, there's one for goalkeepers called post-shot expected goals minus goals conceded. You just went off on one then. Yeah. Go on, set, set post-shot expected goals yep. minus goals conceded. So it's something to do with... You wanted me up. You <laughs> just know, made that yeah, up. I know. Google it. <laughs> something to do with... So on the strike, the striker gets scored by how likely they are to score, depending on where the ball is, et cetera, et cetera, how far out. And the goalkeeper gets points on how likely they are to save said shot. But it's a bit spurious, isn't it? But it's opinion. Well, no, that's fact-based because all the stats are... Well, it is... Okay, Ultimately, it's based on opinion because it's Bob who's deciding whether that's a 40% chance that he's going to score <laughs> from there or a 70% chance. But as I say, well, then, then all of all of then football is. I yeah, mean, there's a good, there's a load of stats around football, but are any and do any of them mean anything? Then is anything really? If they're measurable, but the obvious one's a striker, right? Yeah, surely. But if you've scored. If you've what you could argue against the case is that your wingers are terrible. You're a good headerer. Your wingers are terrible. A headerer. Headerer. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Mine are outstanding. So I've scored ten goals. I've I've headed ten goals in the goal this year. You haven't headed one in. So you could look. You could. Do you know what I mean? You could look and go right. I've scored ten. You've scored none. But there's a massive part that's been played for you. You've had a massive lack of service. Yes. So, is the truth that I've scored 10... The truth is I've scored 10 goals, yeah. I have scored 10 goals. There's a truth behind and that. And as right? a measurable, again, going back to the bonus thing, that the, the, yeah. you will get incentivized as a striker to score goals and you will yeah. get rewarded to score goals. And yeah. Therefore, you will be measured against how many goals you score. Yeah. Goalkeeper will be about clean sheets. How, it's the def- same thing, isn't it? it is, but as a defender, as a midfielder... what? Even if we're saying the measurables were a bit spurious, do defenders and midfielders have bonuses based on their individual performances? Defenders will be involved in clean sheets as well. But they get most of become the clean sheets. But, but what about midfielder? I don't think there's a measurable in football apart from distance covered. Like distance when we're talking covered. shot, you know, you, I, it never happened. Probably ten, maybe even. Probably certainly 10 years ago, Adidas developed a chip to go inside yeah. the ball. Yeah, yeah. And there's this whole thing thinking, and they've done it in basketball, but it's never really happened. And they've done this is a whole thing about, oh, yeah, the stats are going to be amazing because we can see how hard they hit the shot and yeah. the rotations on the ball and all this sort of stuff, which again, probably doesn't mean anything, but they were measurables. Yeah. Never really happens, never really come into the game. Um, Maybe it never came in because even if there are measurables, what are they? What 
Do they tell us? But uh, listen, I know someone sitting there listening to this and going, "There's crosses into the box. There's tackles. There's." I understand that. I, I fully understand that. But if you're right winger playing against a left back who's fat as a house who can't move, you're going to be able to get the ball into the box. Where if the guy at the other end is playing against someone who's ridiculously fit, you might be a similar player, but you're not going to get as many crosses in. So it all depends on so many different aspects. So many. There might be a wind going into your face from one side compared to the guy at the other side. Yeah. There might be a sun in your eye. The pitch could be horrendous on your side. There's so many things. Okay. So um, at Borum... Yeah. Your current club, where you're the goalkeeping coach. Do the players wear GPS? Yes. And what information does that give the analyst? Yeah. See, I knew you were going to do that. I knew you were going to do that. Testing, there's bucket loads of measurables. Bucket loads. Okay. How what, high can you jump? And I know we get... What the, yes, that is a measurable. Okay, what benefit... Okay, what measurables do you get from the GPS? You'll get, high benefits? you'll get their high speed, you'll get their average speed, you'll get their distance you've covered, which is all measurable. But what does it... How does the club then act on that? What do they do with that information? They can do as they wish with it. They can look and go, well, uh, our centre midfield players are not covering a much, as much distance because they'll do an average of what... What, what sums us out is, is when a team get promoted they'll look the other teams and go, right, what really worked well for them? So, for example, in a National League, if you're good at set pieces, defending and attacking, yeah. you've got a really good opportunity to get at least halfway up the table. Yeah? So, what did, who went out? I think it was, it might have been Sutton. I might have that wrong, but it might have been Sutton that were outstanding at set pieces one year. And they ended up getting promoted. I'm sure it was Sutton. Um, so, they'll use that. And then they'll go, right, how much distance was covered They'll just, they'll just analyse and assess and compare what they've done to what we're doing or not doing. To what? Then develop training sessions try and, to... Yes, try and maybe go, right, they cover 12, uh, you know, two mile a game or, or 10 mile a game. Well, ours are covering six every game. Well, maybe they're not working hard enough and they're not getting close enough to the ball, which is why they're getting opportunities to score against us. Okay. So you can use stuff like that. Yeah, well, they're measurable. But not, testing right? is measurable. We're talking about the football match... Now, yeah, being played, yeah, yeah, with no GPS, is no, 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 just going back to the old school 30 years ago. Assess the game, you can put your opinion on it, but you can't put one measurable on that game, yeah, yeah. But we've just said we can because we're wearing GPS, no, but so the whole years game, ago, so we're no, no, GPS. no, 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 but we're, no, no, but I've agreed the, you can test the, the, the question, my Measurable's question testable, was, can. Are there measurables in football? In fact, let's. I'm going to say there are measurables in football. Yeah. On the back of the GPS and all the information, and all clubs are using that information. I agree. Let's look at goalkeepers. So yeah. I'll ask the same question at Boreham Wood. Do the goalkeepers wear GPS? No, but can you get can you measure stuff by testing, and it's measurable by testing? Yes. One million percent. I take a second half to get to a six-yard box. You take four seconds. That's measurable. Full stop. That's the truth. I've got it on print. Yeah. You've kept four king sheets. But you don't I've do kept that. four king sheets. You don't sheets. do that. But if you, we've played in different games, it's an, it, yes, there's a truth behind it, but there's so many things that could, that could play a difference to that. You, I might have played the cup games where we're playing a t you know, three teams, four leagues lower than us. You could play it against the top, the top three teams or top four teams. You've played yeah. four games. All right, there's truth, one. but there's not really. Okay, a... I, I, have you seen the movie? I think it's called Moneyball. Yes, about baseball. Yeah, where the guy basically trawled through all the stats yeah. of all the baseball players. Unbelievable film. And assembled a team of a, a baseball team. Yeah, based on a load of players that people were discounting because they actually hadn't looked at the stats. Yeah. Great movie. Brilliant. How do I do that, or can I do that in football? So if, if we're saying there's no measurables, how, as a club, am I then making decisions on who I recruit as in, into my squad? There must be, I must be basing that on measurables. Of course, it is. And 
the main thing behind it is if you're looking at a striker, the obvious thing you're going to look for is the goals they've scored. Okay, let's yeah? let's let's just talk goalkeeping. How am I recru- <clears throat> how am I on based on measurables? Yeah. How am I finding my next number one goalkeeper? By putting your your opinion on their attributes. So if you're a team that want to play out, so we're at Fulham, you've got Mark Schwartz, who's one of the best goalies that's played in the Premier League. Martin Yell comes in and wants to play football. Wants a goalie to go left foot, right foot, round the corner, he wants to do that. So he brings Martin Stecklenburg in. So Stecklenburg now, in Martin Joel's opinion, is going to be a better a better player for the team than a Mark Schwarzer because in his opinion, he plays out better with his feet. Yeah, I get that in an old That's school an opinion. scouting scenario because yeah. the only way you can do that is to be an old school scout and go and watch yep. Mark Schwartz in a game wherever. Yep. In the modern game, how do I... Is there a way for me to find this nugget of a goalkeeper who's playing in Sweden and he's 19 and I've never seen him play, but there's some there's a database, there's some measurables somewhere that that say to me, whack, I'd and again it might I'd still probably I still of course need to go and see the keeper, but is there yeah. something that says this kiddie on yeah. paper looks amazing? Could yeah, it could there be something where there's there's stats saying that he comes for every one in three crosses. Yeah, I don't know. Because, but my guess is for outfield players, the stat I can. There's a database. Yeah, there's somewhere. how many crosses they'll get into the box, how many third runs they'll make into the. the, the there, there is that. Okay, but my argument still is. Yeah. Yeah. Costas score from Fulham. Costas, we signed a uh, the the Greek uh, striker scores like forty odd goals in a season. Yeah, in Greece. But he scored 40. Yeah, it's in Greece. Comes to the Premier League, scores, but don't score nowhere near as many as he does in Greece. Yeah, but we've bought him because he scored 40 goals. Yes, he scored 40 goals. But it's a different, it's a different beast now. Yeah. He's coming from a good league to a unbelievable league. So does that mean he's going to score 40 in that one? Because that's a that's a that's a measurable, isn't it? it so is. if we go back to goalies, yeah. I get it. You go, right, he's kept tank, there's a goalie in Sweden who's kept 10 clean sheets and he comes for every one in three crosses and his passing accuracy is X, X and X. Yeah? yeah. So we've seen that on print. Bring him to the Premier League. You've got the pressures now. Yeah. You've got the massive crowds. There's so many things. They're going to press you quicker. But I'm still using those stats. to. F- I'm still using the measurables to find that. I mean, I'm going back to this post. Yep. I have to read it again. Post shot expected goals minus goals conceded. If you look at the stats from last year, last season, Premiership, I think uh, according to that stat alone, which is the, uh, which is based on whether the goalkeeper is likely to save the shot or not, so it's only one stat. I think Allison was number one. I think Loris was number two or number three. But effectively, if you look at the what so you the top teams. what your opinion would be arguably the best keepers in the yeah. league. Yeah. Probably that one stat underlined what you as a yeah, someone understanding the the role would you'd probably draw the same conclusions. So there's a stat there, it's measurable, however good or bad it is, it actually it looks like it's quite good because it's not yeah. saying some random keeper is statistically the best in the league. It's saying Allison last season was the best in the league. And who's he play for again? Yeah, I forget now. So, you know when it comes up yeah, in the paper and it says Nick, uh, what was the last one? When Newcastle was struggling. Nick Pope is the top goalie and then it was the uh, the current, I can't remember what it was, and it was like, they've just flipped the table upside down and funny enough, the best goalies with the most saves made are the ones at the bottom. Why? Because Man City's and Arsenal's and Chelsea are battering the tip, not battering them disrespectfully, but they're getting yeah. a lot of opportunities. Yeah. So if you're shooting me 10 times, at some point I'm going to start making saves. So of course they're going to be up there with a save ratio. <laughs> Best goalie in the in league's got to be Nick Pope because he's got, you know, 84% save ratio. What does that actually mean? Yeah, but this, this particular stat is not save ratio. This is how good their 
they are going to be to make that save. So it doesn't matter whether they've had one shot during the game or 50 shots. I think that's the most ridiculous <laughs> thing I've ever seen because that couldn't be any more opinion-based if you tried. I mean, admittedly... And we test it. Bob is, Bob is making the call as to whether it's a 50% chance that they're going to score We're, or a 20%. I'll tell you what then. How about we do this as a proper special podcast? Okay. We will come to someone like here yeah. for a game yeah. and we'll get three professional goalies in the room. Love that. And we will do, minute goes for a breakthrough on a 1v1 or something, we will get them to write down very, very, very quickly what their score is. All scores will be different. Yeah. But Bob nails it. He knows exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. Which for me is the biggest load of twat I've ever heard. And apologies if that is some, you know, if, if that Bob's is... listening. Peter Sch- uh, it might be Bob Peter might Shilton. be listening. Yeah. He's not, he's he not could happy. be Peter Shilton, He's not happy it? with that. Yeah. But it's an opinion. I think he's going to... The minute you say think, it's an opinion, isn't okay. it? Okay. So, the the original question yeah. was, are there measurables in goalkeeping? The conclusion at the moment is, mm, you're saying no, I'm kind of saying, well, there are, but how good they are or in different ways. Yeah, I don't know. We could argue both ways. Let's ask a second question. Do we need measurables? What you, What use? Are there any use? Let's say there were 10 things that 100% we could absolutely measure, like it's taking me three shots to get in yeah. the hole or whatever, whatever. Yeah. Do we need, do we need measure? Does it make any difference? Would it make any, how would it help? Can, can it help? Yes. I think it can, without a doubt. Um, in what way does it help? Because, that, because you've then got an argument and you've got a, you've got a case haven't you? I'm going to sponsor this golfer because they average five under par every every week. Yeah? With goalkeeping, if you can get something that is kind of measurable, are you going to use... Yeah, I think you would use it. Testing, I think you would 100% use it. If you can jump, you know, six inches higher than I can, would I put you slightly ahead of me if I was looking at bringing Scully in? That might be the slight advantage. And then by the time you get loads of them little bits, there, there might be a massive gap. Okay. From but a- the argument against that could be some of the biggest goalies I've worked with have been the most effective goalies in the league. Nicky Ball at Wickham was not, not a, and he'll admit this, wasn't million, million percent fit. He was best in the league by a mile. Why? Because he was the most effective in the league. But I can't show you any truth to that by giving you loads and loads of measurable um, stats to say was, I can only go on my opinion. Okay, so I get that. You coach all levels, lots of kids and adults, and you base your coaching of those athletes on yeah. your opinion as to what elements of the game they need to work on. Yeah. If there was a database of measurables yeah. for every single one of those keepers that effectively told you they're weak at this, they're strong at that, they're, they're no good at that, would you, A, stick with your tried and tested, let's call it old-fashioned method of yep. going, well, I'm looking at Johnny and I can see ah, he's a bit weak there, bit, or would you, B, go to the database and go, well, the measurables are telling me that Johnny's no good at that. Which would you use to effectively then make Johnny a better keeper? In the perfect world, you use the measurables. Yeah, without a doubt. So I still go back to the golf. You got three shots, I got four shots. That's the truth. So if there is something that can come up with that, fine. Yeah, but, but the, the problem with football the, is, but the golf doesn't matter. That the golf for me, yeah, is like a striker scoring goals, because the golf it doesn't then say, so, yeah, you know, my drive's crap. Actually, I need to improve. I need to hit more fairways. There's a stat for that. You know, I'm slicing the ball. I'm topping the ball. Whatever. It doesn't. That stat, those stats in golf don't necessarily give the coach the stats he or she needs to make yeah. that athlete no, I agree. Better. I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. And you could say that, you know, the, 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 I teed off at eight in the morning, you teed off at 10. But by the time 10 come round, the wind was horrendous. Yeah. And you still scored better than me or you scored worse than me. So that 100%, and it's the same with the strikers. But I think there's a lot more involved that play a, a, a part against the strikers to just say, they scored 10 goals. But that's what they're measured on. 
That's what they're measured on. If if we as glove glue developed a goalkeeping glove yeah. with some amazing tech inside it. Yeah. That just said uh well I don't know what we'd want to measure, to be honest. Remind but, you for anniversaries, birthdays, <laughs> yeah, probably. Birthdays. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> just another But idea. let's say it said it might be able to measure it's in your glove, but distance covered and how far you jumped and how wide you jumped and stuff yep. like that. Would you as a coach see a benefit in that? Yeah, I think you would see a benefit in it. Yeah. Because my guess is that's coming. I had a call from an academy coach, actually, a Premier League academy coach. Yeah. Asking that very question, could we develop something along those lines? Yeah. Of which, of which my response was, well, it's not really our bag because there are already plenty of tech-based companies yeah. that have developed GPS and tracking and everything and already working with clubs and players it's going to be a small step for them to find something that yeah. probably straps around the wrist of a keeper as opposed to us trying to start from scratch and try and develop something which they're way ahead anyway because they've already made the investment yeah. so there's a premier league academy coach asking for exactly what we've just talked about that he thinks to make better decisions for coaching the 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 um the kids in the academy, yeah. he wants measurables. He wants stats. So whether they're good, bad, or indifferent, and whether they actually are true measurables or not, or a bit spurious, I guess at the end of the day, if they're measurables, if there's a way of measuring something to compare with somebody else, I guess it's another string to your bow Completely. as a coach or as a club yeah. to try and make decisions. Yeah but you're never going to take away the, dis the 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 knowledge of whoever's making those decisions based on gut feel, personality. Yeah. It comes back to the training ground goalie, the one they signed just to be in training, not the third choice, just to train. In a training session, you'll be outstanding. In a game, he's a different beast. Why? Because there's emotions involved in it. The decision making process doesn't become as clean, and you can't measure that. Yeah. There's no way of measuring it. So, as you were saying, I'm just thinking when the ball's going for a corner, the minute it comes in, how quick can the goalie make a decision whether they're coming and get it or they're going to drop back in their goal and make a save? Can you measure that? Potentially, you probably could try and measure that, but you've still got whether it's in swing, out swing, whether the ball's taken away from you with a wind or not wind, or you can't see it because of the sun. For me, there's just so many. But the testing, 100%. If you want a goalie that's going to be able to get to six-yard box in three seconds, can you measure it? Yes, you can. You know, Do you want a goalie that's going to be a certain weight? Yes, you can measure it. But you can't still make that decision on measure, ball comes over the top, and I'm going to come out, or I'm going to drop back. How do you met? For me, it's impossible to measure yeah. because it, every situation is completely different. We, you and I talked about an event, putting on an event, and they yes. do this in the US in the, in the NFL. Yeah. They have an event. It's an annual event where they invite NFL players. Yeah. And I think there are 10 disciplines that are all measured. Yeah. And those disciplines might, it might be how far can they, how fast can they sprint? How high can they jump? How far can they throw, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. You and I talked about an event, doing an event in goalkeeping along those lines. Yeah. How fast can you uh, sprint? How high can you jump? jump? Yeah. How far can you kick the ball? How accurately can you kick the ball? How yeah. accurately can you throw the ball? Yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, think, I think there's some merit in that. It would be a, it'd be a really interesting exercise to do. Mm. The exercise being the winner of, the winner of that event how good a goalkeeper are they? Mm. Do you know what I mean? So you could yeah. you could win all ten events, and clearly you've got all the attributes and all the skills required to yeah. be a goalkeeper. Yeah. But actually, how good a goalkeeper are you? Well, I suppose you're coming up with the FIFA. Is it the profiles that they have, and they rate them, they rate the players? What top trumps? Yeah, top trumps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, it's trying 28 to twenty eight for that, speed. Yeah, yeah, it is. Can Six you measure? One. And it's the kicking. You can can measure as long as it's a level playing field. 
as in you're all in the same position, kicking on the same time. Yeah. Hundred percent, you can measure that. Yeah. Hundred percent. I don't what know I've, what actually. I don't know. I'm going back to FIFA. I don't know what attributes FIFA put on there. It's the, on the cards, isn't it? Match speed. attacks put on the cards. I'm saying it like I know it, but I've got to think something like speed, passing, shooting, tackling. Yeah, they're all quite the obvious. I mean, ones. I haven't played top drunks for a long time. Match attacks, a whole thing, but I guess it's. I can't remember back in the day where, you know, if you got a goalkeeper, was it like, ah, oh, crap? Or was it, oh, okay, I've got a goalkeeper. Height, six for yeah. three, you know, bang. Thank you very yeah. much. I love your card. I, I can't remember what the, what the stats are. I think are the modern on. day thing for that is now called Tinder, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know whether there are any measures on and then that. they've got an option of how tall you are now. Yeah, I think probably going to be off topic there. Are we? It? Yeah, I'm 52. I haven't come across Tinder. I mean, I haven't either, obviously. No, of course. You know? No. Um, but there was, yeah, there is a, well, I don't know if I should say that, I'll say it because there's, it's going to only be a, a possible 30 people on the bus. But yeah, we did have a scenario on the bus a few weeks ago of one of the, um, yeah. Well, there of, was some measurables. One of the Was boys, this a yeah. collective um, Tinder me- measurable? Oh, this is, but that's opinion well, based. That's opinion based. Does it mean that someone was holding a phone and there was 18 of us all round yeah. chatting, yes, swipe left or no, swipe right? Yeah. Yeah, no, we wouldn't do that no, as a group no, of, no, no, of, no. of fully grown men. We no, wouldn't do that. That's absolutely. silly. Um, but yeah, there was, uh, yeah, there was a, there was one of the boys on the bus looking, looking through, which was quite funny. Yeah, actually. but that's opinion based. It's not, it's not measurable. So I think it's. I mean, thanks for. Bringing there is the measurable. There is measurables. Disagree with you. What are the measurables? Height. You can't see on a. T- are they blonde I, or brunette? I, I would imagine on a Tinder profile you can't see someone's height. Can you? No, I'm sure you can put it on. <laughs> I'm sure it can show you their height, no? I've no idea. I mean, I would no idea what this is. No, no. I've no no idea. No, okay. But anyway, back to goalkeeping. (laughs) (laughs) But there is measurables. And I would argue the case with anyone for a long, 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 long time that there's parts of goalkeeping that you can measure in terms of testing. But the decision-making process for me is an absolute... It's a no-no. And... It's all to do with uh, it's all to do with opinions, and my last thing with this is to link it back to the young ones. Yep. Is that when your manager has a go at you for conceding a goal, what you have to remember is, and I ask this right at the end of the session, is it a truth or is it their opinion? Of which they all right at the end answer, it's his opinion or it's her opinion. So it's only their opinion. So no one, there's no handbook to say that goal that you've just conceded, one million percent is your fault. Yep. So it's trying to trying to educate the the young goalies that this is such an opinion based sport or position that don't get dragged down by someone saying you should have saved that. It's rubbish. Could you have affected it a little bit more? Maybe. Could yep. the striker have affected it a little bit more by stopping the ball coming into run? Huh? Maybe. And it's just a really. It's probably one of the most powerful, and I sometimes bring the parents in with this, the most powerful classroom session to make sure the parents walk away going, now, do you know what? It is. It's, it's only their opinion. It's only their opinion. So don't get dragged down by, you should have saved this and this and this. And I had a goal last week, lost 8-0. I was buzzing. Brilliant. So you had loads to do. Yeah, yeah but they lost. That doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. Yeah. You know? Well, the, the manager said I should have done better with the first, the fifth, the eighth... You've lost eight nil. You've learnt bucket loads from it. It's his opinion. It's not your opinion. So, show me the truth to say that that was your fault. Well, we can't. There okay. you go then. So you're going off to um, you're going off to do your old school coaching. I'm going off. I just want to read this again. I know to, you do. Uh, to 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 check out this week's post shot expected goals minus goals conceded stats, and. Um, I might use that for my uh, uh, fantasy league uh, selections, uh, and you can use your unmeasurable gut feel, <laughs> and we'll see how we get on at the end of the season. <laughs> uh, that was the goalkeeping podcast. Um, if you like it, feel free to drop some comments, um, some likes, some shares. Uh, I'm Paul Sherratt. This is Martin Brennan, and thanks for listening.